Good morning. Are we well rested? We got an extra hour of sleep. Yes. Oh, come on. We had an extra hour of sleep. I didn't hear that. What, did, are we well rested? Yes. Yeah, that's much, much better. Well, I'm Trista, and welcome to Faye Sugar Land. In your chair pockets, you will find our Connect card. Please fill out whatever you feel most comfortable sharing, but on the back, the important thing is prayer. And if it's confidential, you mark the box for prayer for pastor and it'll only go to him but we have a wonderful wonderful team that reads these and prays over them now I was just in jury duty for three weeks and the first thing we did was pray before we did it and that was the way we kept centered so no matter what you need to pray for just fill these cards out and we'll pray for you and online give us a shout out or email information at faithsugarland.org please join with me in our mission statement we exist to love God, one another, and our community so that we know and follow Jesus together. All right, take one minute to greet somebody next to you. everyone. Speaking of prayers, we're going to pray here in just a moment, so adopt your prayer postures. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for leading us through this week, through all the hesitations, all the temptations, all the reluctance, and how you inspired us in those moments to keep going and showing love to our neighbors. Uh, Lord God, lift us up through your Holy Spirit as we come here to worship you. Lift up our hearts, give them a voice. Let them sing high so the mountains can hear it. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. And if you could rise to your feet if you are able and join us as we sing our opening hymn.
rich in things and poor in soul. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage, lest we miss your kingdom's goal. Lest we miss your kingdom's goal. Save us from weak resignation to the evils we deplore. Let the gift of your salvation be our glory evermore. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage, serving you whom we adore. Serving you we adore. Continue our worship this morning. We do this, uh, if you're new here, this is called our honest time. And what it is, it's just a time to be honest with God because he knows everything every uh, all the time. He knows everything about us. And uh, so it's, it's, it's a time of confession just to be really honest. And um, I, I ran across something on Facebook this week. And if we could throw that up on the screen, right? It said, don't let the elephants and the donkeys make you forget you belong to the Lamb. <laughs> right? And I thought that was really good because Tuesday's the big election, right? And no matter who wins in whatever position, it's going to be painful. And that's where we as followers of Jesus Christ need to remember what party we belong to, and that is the Christian party. And so... It's so easy just to kind of be blown away by the culture and to fall into the sins of our flesh because the culture invites it. So this is a moment we just take and we're really quiet. It's just you and God. Forget everybody else is here. And you talk to him about your last week. Where did you sin in your thoughts, your words? Maybe what you did, maybe what you should have done, but you didn't do it. So let's take a moment to be quiet right now. When John was an old man, John the disciple, he wrote down in 1 John chapter 1, he said, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just. He forgives our sins and he cleanses us from all wrongdoing. And so as you have confessed your sins, I announce to you the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that he's forgiven you and washed you clean and so you can Keep your chin up and walk as a forgiven, loved, redeemed child of God Almighty. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Let's continue our worship. Amen. Well, if you uh, are able, please continue standing with us. This next song we're going to do has really been on my heart. And, uh, I thought that we had done it here at this church before, but it's going to be a new song for the congregation. Many of you will recognize it. It's an older song, but it's really about the kindness of God and how he draws us unto him with that kindness. We're going to follow it up with a song that, that many of you know about his mercy. And the two of these really go together and I think really um, bring the heart of God this morning to each of us, that he is drawing us unto him and it is his mercy that we need to understand because in that mercy and in that grace and in that sacrifice, we are redeemed and then we are set free from our sin. So I'm going to sing the first verse of this twice to kind of help you get the melody. And then uh, the chorus, I think you'll pick it up by then. And we will come back and do the second verse twice as well. And um, sing along. I think you'll pick it up pretty quickly. And just let the word speak to you from this song. Amen. Hope in the, the sky high of mercy 
rain down the cleansing cup, healing waters rise around us. Hear our cries, Lord, let them rise. Open up the skies of mercy, rain down the cleansing flood, healing waters rise around us, hear our cries, Lord, let them rise, get through your kindness, Lord, that leads us to repentance. Your mercy never fails me all of my days. I've been held in your hand from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head. I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice You have led me through the fire in darkest night, you are close like no other. I've known you as a father, I've known you as a friend. I have lived in the goodness of God. Sing it out, church, all my life. All my life, you have been faithful. All my Running after, running after me. 
Lord God, we thank you that surely your goodness and your mercy will pursue each and every one of us all the days of our lives. Lord God, we open up our hearts to you today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence in this place. Thank you for your mercy, Lord. Amen. And amen. Amen. You may be seated. Children, you are invited up at this time to come join us for the children's message. Wait a second. Wait a second. We got some more? Come on, guys. All right. Good morning. Let's do some. Do some. Give me low fives. Low fives. All right. All the way along. All the way along. All the way along. Oh, thank you. You got some strength there. Man. Oh, all right. Didn't get one from Ryan yet. Why do we have dumbbells? What are these? Huh? These are dumbbells. Or does that mean they're not very smart? Is that why they call them dumbbells? They're not very smart? Yeah. Oh, I don't know about that. What do we do? What do we do with these things? We exercise. Let's see. Hatch cream, would you like to volunteer? You want to pick one up? I want I want I want somebody to come up here and do do some curls. Like this. Can you want to do it? Try it, hatch cream? Come on. You can pick any one you want. Okay, hold on, Jack. Pick one. Pick one. Oh, you got the big. Be careful. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's a big one. Be careful. Don't drop it on your toe. Or the, your parents will never let you come back to church. All right. It's big, isn't it? That's kind of heavy. Okay. Oh. Oh. Well, he's, he's like, oh, that's nothing for me. Come on. Come on, all-American boy. Which one are you going to do? That one. Oh. Can you, can you go like this? Woo! Woo! There's some strength. All right. You got to go down. All right. Good job. Good job. All right. Who else? Axel, you want to give it a shot? Hold on. Hold on. Axel's going to take. Oh, oh, oh. That's a, Oh, my gosh. Whoa. Good job. Good job. All right. Let's, all right. All right. Camille, do you want to try one? Oh, hold on. Here we go. Everybody, come on, give Camille a hand. Come on. Whoa! Whoa! Nice. All right. Woo! Okay, okay. That's enough. That's enough. That's enough. Okay, hold on. Shh. So this, why do we, why do we take weights and work out with them, huh? Why do we do this, huh? So we can be stronger. That's right, exactly. And so we do that physically, and the Bible actually tells us that physical exercise is good for us, but there's something else that's even better. Oh my gosh, Daniel, you nailed it. Spiritual exercise is even greater, and the reason is, is because just like you guys are pretty young yet, right? And
And as you get older, could you lift more weight than this? But can you lift more weight than this now? No. No. Because you haven't grown into it yet. And the same thing is true spiritually, not just for you guys, but even all these people behind me. They've never stopped spiritually working out because we're always supposed to be growing spiritually to look like Jesus. Right? Was Jesus pretty awesome? Yeah. Yeah. Did he love everybody? Yeah. Yeah. Was he kind? Yes. Did he speak the truth kindly? Yes. And we're supposed to be like Jesus, right? Now, the great news is, what did he do on the cross for us? He died. For why? Our sins, right. He's already paid for all of our sins. So even though we'll never be perfect on earth, Yeah, to save us, exactly. So we know for sure we're going to go to heaven one day, right? But while we're on earth, are we supposed to just like, okay, I'm done growing spiritually. I don't need to get any more like Jesus. Does that make sense? No. We're supposed to keep growing so we can look like who? Jesus. Jesus. That's exactly right. That's That's why we come to church. That's why we have... Worship Plus, that's why we have the lion's den, and that's why at home, right, our parents pray with us, have devotions with us, because they keep growing like Jesus, and so do we, right? All right, let's close with a prayer, and then you guys can be off to Worship Plus. Lord Jesus, thank you that you already paid for all our sins and gave us our ticket to heaven. And thank you also that we can keep working out spiritually so that we can grow more like you. And bless us as we do that all the days of our life. And it's in your name we pray and everybody said, all right, you can go off to Worship Plus. And Pedro is our reader today. So congregation, would you say good morning, Pedro? Oh, we do prayer? Hold it, hold it. He, he, He reads after. Hold on, Pedro. I messed that up. Jesse is leading our prayers. Say good morning, Jesse. Good morning. See, these, these really are dumbbells. It's awesome. Good morning, church. Good morning. Let's pray together. We give thanks to Almighty God for the scripture tells us that you love the world so much that you gave your begotten son the one that you love so much you gave it up for us that is how special you view not just us but the entire world so we thank you lord for you have expressed your truth to us and father this we believe lord comfort us with this truth even though we see things not perfect lord in your mercy father we honor you in our nation But first, we have to honor you in our hearts. As we bring our offering and tithes to you, Lord, in prayers and by faith. Lord, use this to build your kingdom, to provide for those that are in need. And Father, let it be, O Lord, a sign that we trust you regarding where our source of income comes from. Give us strength, Lord, for each day. Father, provide for all our needs according to your riches in glory. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we come before you on behalf of our nation. Lord, as our nation, Lord, Father, approach this election, many hearts are troubled. Others imagine the worst. But Lord, we remember that you are God and you are not going to be dethroned on earth nor in heaven. We stand in your word that says when things arise that troubles us, we should lift our prayers to you and that you will hear us in heaven. We humbly pray that this election will end in peace. We humbly ask you to elect for us a leader that fears you. And Lord God, we pray that you give us peace because you are our peace. We pray, Lord, that you help us to pray for our nation because we have a desire to please you. Lord, give us the strength to do this. 
Lord, in your mercy. Our Heavenly Father, we are often challenged by our troubles. Not that we wish for them, but that is the nature of the world that we live in. We are challenged in our faith. We pray that you strengthen our faith. We are challenged by our health. We pray, Lord, that you heal us. We are challenged by our work. We pray that you strengthen us. We are challenged by our children. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you turn their hearts to know you. Father, we come today to receive your word. Let your word make us grow our faith that we might be able to stand in this day that we are in. Lord, in your mercy. Father, Lord, there are many things in our hearts that we wish to say today. But only you know them, and you know them perfectly. Uh, we pray, Lord, as we open our hearts and mind to think and to pray about them this moment, that you will hear from heaven, and you will hear our individual prayers as we pray silently. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we thank you for this, and we pray that you would lead us even into worship. And as you have taught us to pray the Lord's Prayer, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thou is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, Pedro. Let's say welcome, Pedro. because the Lord is with us. Hi. By the way, I have not read this, so. The first reading comes from Acts, chapter 2, 42 through 47. The Christian physician named Luke records in the book of Acts as a summary paragraph that describes a picture of the life of the early Christian church in Jerusalem, possibly the first three to five years of existence, of its existence. Listen to the description of their activity, then listen to the result of their activity. How does that compare to our church? They were continually devoting themselves to the apostles, teaching and fellowship of the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone kept feeling a sense of awe and many wonders and signs were taking place through the apostles. And all the believers were together and had all things in and they would sell their property and possessions and share them with all, to the extent that anyone had need. Day by day, continuing with one mind in the temple and breaking bread from the house to house, they were taking their meals together with gladness and, sincerely, and sincerity of their heart of heart, praising God, having favor with all the people, and the Lord was adding to their number day by day those who were being saved. The second reading is from Romans 8, 29 through 30. The Apostle Paul explains to us our purpose on earth prior to going to heaven. Listen to see if you can pick up the key point or plan that God has for you. Among many brothers and sisters, and having chosen them, he called them to come to him. And having called them, he gave them right standing with himself. And having given them right standing 
he gave them his glory. This is the God, this is God's word for our reflection today. Will you please rise as we profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, sits at the right hand of the Father, Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, You may be seated. Well, good morning, everybody. Nice to see you this morning. Hey, if you have, uh, uh, if you're new or, or you want to follow along, there's an outline that is in the bulletin that you can follow along with. Everybody hear me good? Luke, back there? Yep, okay, good. Well, let's pray. Lord Jesus, we just ask this morning as we talk about stewardship that your spirit has access to each person, whether they're online today, in the house, even listening later. Open our hearts, open our minds. Because you are the Lord God of the whole universe, and you love each of us, help us to hear your will and respond. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. amen. All right. So we're doing stewardship today. Uh, it's called Undeveloped Muscles, right? Obviously, you got a little hint of that with the kids' message. And to start it off, I actually did a survey on Survey Monkey, and Typical for our population in our country, not very many people responded. But I did get 11 responses. The ages of the responses were three were in the 19 to 29 category, two in the 40 to 59 category, three in the 60 to 69, and three in the 70 plus. So actually the distribution was good, even if the quantity wasn't. We can't really take any assessment of our congregation from this. However, it's a good lead-in to what that was. And so here was the first question. The most important reason you attend worship on Sundays. First one was fellowship with my Christian friend. Second was to worship God. And the third was to grow as a disciple of Jesus. Somebody asked me, they said, man, that is a really hard question to answer. I said, yeah, that was the point. And you can see the distribution. You had one, six, and four. Good response. Second question was this. What is the most meaningful thing that you take away from worship? A reflection of what God spoke to me. And notice everybody said that. Isn't that something? And then second was a great joy being with Christian friends, which is really wonderful. It's a wonderful blessing. And personally warmed through my worship of God. But it, I was really surprised that all 11 responses were a reflection of what God had spoken to me. The third one was, if I had to choose, the greatest takeaway for Sunday morning worship would be a personal encounter with the Lord. That's a powerful thing. Second would be a being encouraged in my faith by other Christians. That's a really powerful thing. And the third is being shaped more into the likeness of Jesus. And the majority, eight of them, took that. Now, today we're talking about stewardship. Stewardship is, means you're a manager, right? You're not the owner, you're the manager. Your life is not owned by you. Contrary to 
popular opinion in our country. You don't own your life. Who owns your life? God who created you, and if you're a Christian, who also saved you and redeemed you. So he owns your life, and so we're called to be managers. Now, usually when I do a a three-week sermon series on stewardship, I talk about the triple T's, I call them. Your time, what you do with your time, what you do with your treasures, and what you do with your talents. But I'm not going to do that this year. Instead, we're going to talk about strengthening spiritual muscles. Uh, Pastor Jeff Clater originally spoke to a bunch of pastors about this, and it was really good, and that's where the idea came from. I went in a little different direction, but uh, it was really helpful for me. Now, this is, this is perfect timing for this as we talk about stewardship because it comes from last week we talked about the Reformation, Reformation Sunday, and making the gospel of Jesus really simple. And just a, a, a really quick review of that, do versus done. Right? If you weren't here, it's about not what you do, but what Jesus has done for you. That Jesus on the cross died, and when he said, it is finished, that meant the payment for all the sins of the whole world was completed. And then he rose from the dead to prove it was true, and when we put our faith in him, it's done. It's a done deal. Woo! Isn't that awesome? Everybody say amen. amen. Good. Hey, that was even pretty good. Pretty good response. It should be because, let me tell you, this life is short. And we will spend eternity, and especially with the new heaven and the new earth, it's going to be incredible. It's not about what you do, it's about what he's done. And then we talked about grace. Put your fingers up, all five fingers, go like this. God's riches at Christ's expense. Right? If you missed that, that's okay. But that's a really great little acronym. God's riches at Christ's expense. But today, we're going to talk about, well, what about the rest of our time here on earth? And we're going to focus in on this one verse. This is the New Living Translation. It's Romans 8, verse 29, and here's what it says. For God knew his people in advance, and he chose them to become like who? His son, so that his son would be the firstborn amongst many brothers and sisters. So if Jesus was standing right up here in the middle, and we all got up here, and we were all just in line with him, right? We're actually his human brothers and sisters who have been changed. But we haven't arrived. And so we're supposed to keep growing in his likeness. Now, what I did on this, this outline, I'm just going to show these verses in different translations of English. Right, the New Living Translation, it says he chose them to become like his son. The NIV says it this way. Those God foreknew, that is he knew in advance because he knows everything and don't try and understand that because your brain will break. Okay, God, he foreknew, he also predestined. Luke, this is your destiny, right? You were predestined to be conformed, and that means shaped, right? Shaped into the image of of Jesus. Is Jesus pretty special? Really special, right? And we're supposed to be shaped into his image. Now, does God tell us to do stuff that we can't do with his power? The New American Standard Bible, the 2020 verse, says this. He also predestined us to become conformed to the image of his son. Sounds about the same, doesn't it? This is the message version. This is a transliteration. It's not a a detailed translation. It's supposed to be in today's language. He decided from the outset to shape the lives of those who love him along the same lines as the life of of his son. I don't like that as much. It's a little mushy. I understand, though, it's really good for people who've never read the Bible. Now, so far in the book of Romans, here's what Paul has gone through. He's talked about why do we need salvation? And that's because of our sin. 
our sin that breaks the relationship with him. What has God done to affect our salvation? He sent Jesus to do everything he's done. And how can we receive it? We receive it through faith, through trusting in him. And then we get to this verse in chapter 8, and, and do we need any more? Yes. While we're here on earth, and there, here's the point, right? God's plan for a Christian while we are on earth is you don't just, okay, I'll go to church every week, and I'll punch the clock, and I'm saved, and we're all good. That's not his plan. His plan is to shape you even you joy at age 100 you haven't arrived yet isn't it great i can pick on her because she's 100 <laughs> we keep on growing into his likeness amen that's what he's saying now even as much as i hesitate to do this next thing i'm going to do it anyway I'm going to put you into your head and not your heart. Because the Christian faith is not just about our heart faith. It's also our head faith. So I'm going to give you a chart. We're going to look at this chart. Now this chart, right, has, if you look at the bottom, that's your state of being, your existence. It's how you are without Christ. And the bottom line says what? Man's sinfulness. And that's where everybody starts, okay? And that's a bad thing because at the very top is what? God's what? Righteousness, or you could say his holiness. And there's a huge gap. And that's what separates us. Now, this one, when you put your faith in Jesus, that's ex immediately what your status becomes. It's your legal status. You are looked at by God as perfect. You with me? Isn't that incredible? God, you're like, that can't be. Right? Because, you know, you look in the mirror and you know you're not perfect. But because of Jesus, God looks at you as absolutely perfect. Completely perfect. Isn't that incredible? Right now, the third one. That's where that's our process. It's to grow our state of being so that we become like him. That makes sense. Right? And the final one is the gold star. <laughs> you get your gold star, when does that happen? when you die or when Jesus returns and what happens is your status and your state of being come together in total perfection when you get to live you get a new human body joy will no longer be feeling 100 years old right you'll be feeling probably 25 yes <laughs> right because there's no more pain, there's no more suffering, there's no more tears. We get to live forever in, in perfect state, right? But that hasn't happened yet. And that's why Paul says, God chose all those who were in Christ to become, to be shaped into his son's likeness. All right, got that? That's all clear. Now, how did the, the other verse we had, how did the early church do this? This verse in Acts 2, verses 42 to 47, is actually a summary of probably the first three to five years of the early Christian church after it was born on Pentecost. When all the people came to faith, and this is a summary paragraph. That's what most theologians, historians, as they read, study the scriptures, would say this is. It says, they were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and to what? Fellowship to the breaking of bread and to prayer. 
right? So they were continually doing this. This was their life. And they were devoted to it. It wasn't just if I got enough time. It's I make the time. And what were they devoting themselves to? The apostles' teaching. Fellowship. Breaking of bread, which most theologians will say is Holy Communion, although they also met in one another's homes and had what they called love feasts. They, they ate together. And prayer. And the result of that comes in verse 47. It says, and the Lord was adding to their number. They had signs and wonders. People were giving so willingly of, of their treasures. And the Lord was adding daily to their number who were saved. Right? So I, I got this. Are, are you, have you two guys been able to see that the whole time? That would be bad. Here, I'll put it back so everybody can see it. This is a little banner, right? What's a disciple? The four L's. Listen to his word. Learn from his word. What, what was that passage said? Uh, they were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching. Isn't that, you, you listen and you learn. I was so blessed on that survey. All 11 of the people said, that the greatest part of Sunday worship is listening to what God had to say to them that they could take away. It was unanimous. I'm like, whoa, that's just incredible. Because that's first on the list. I got to listen to him and learn from him. And then I began to live like him. Right? And that's where we get to fellowship. The fellowship. That's with one another, right? So we're, because life is hard, isn't it? Amen? Amen? I ought to have a huge amen. Yeah, that's a, uh, yeah. It's just not easy. And I don't care if you're the youngest or the oldest here. And the breaking of bread, which is part of the connection with the Lord through communion and, and the prayer. Because we want to live out his word. And actually, we could say, listen, learn, look. Right? Look like him to live like him. And then link others to him. And that, that was the summary. And the Lord was adding to their their numbers, right? Because they were like, "Woo, the Holy Spirit is working in us. And Jesus is the most important thing in the world. Right? So here's my question. We're going to do a little interaction. Josh, can you come grab the mic? Oh, you got one? Well, oh, are you using that one? I asked Josh to go around. All right, so you just go, go over by the middle for right now because I'm not quite ready for you, but if you can stand, everybody can look at you. It's all good. So how do we grow in the likeness of Jesus? This is where we're talking today about developing unused spiritual muscles. Okay? So first is relational muscles. Relational muscles, right? It says all the believers were together. Well, so what happens, Marty, when we get together? When we're hanging out together, what happens? Let me, let me give you the next, there you go. See, see the, guess what the word is. What do we do? Connect. Connect. Perfect. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Five points. Okay, we'll go over to this side next. No. We connect, Right? And, and that's relationship building. And frankly, that's one of the benefits and blessings of being in a smaller church is 
we can actually connect and get to know one another, but we can't get to know everybody. That's why we really need to find avenues that we connect with, whether they're smaller Bible studies, fellowship groups, because when we get to know one another and we listen to one another, all of a sudden it's like, okay, we're sharing life together. We take care of each other. And when a brother or sister falls in sin, we're not there to judge them. We're there to help lift them up to get back on the right path. Isn't that beautiful? And that's what we're called to do. So the first muscle, and look, this is really important because we are in such a digital information overload world that we're becoming isolated. Amen? Right? I mean, the digital world, it's not, it's not helping us. It's amazing, but it's not helping us in terms of relationship. Second one, vulnerability. Vulnerability muscles. You're like, oh, I didn't know there were muscles called vulnerability. We're talking about, about spiritual muscles here. It says, day by day, continuing with one mind. Karen and I aren't even in one mind. She's my wife. Now, we're much closer to one mind today than we were 32 plus years ago when we got married. Because we've spent all that time in, together. But you know where that happens is being vulnerable with one another. It's terrifying, isn't it? Because, because if, I'm in, if I'm meeting together and we're getting in relationship, joy might actually see. Isn't it great I could pick on you all day today? <laughs> joy might even know some things about me that I don't want her to know. It's kind of scary. Vulnerability, right? It, it, here's, here's one. Being vulnerable is uncomfortable. It is. So a lot of people don't know, like, I was really insecure growing up. And that insecurity took a hold of me for many, many, many years, including in ministry. And it, it's amazing how that stuff that happens to you as a child still sticks with you when you're older, right? And so... When you become vulnerable, you actually are strengthening your faith. Because, because you're trusting, you're saying, okay, Jesus, you got this. I'm uncomfortable, but you've got me, you've got this other person. I have eternal life, I've got your spirit. Even if I look like a fool... I'm okay. And vulnerability builds trust, doesn't it? So the third muscles are collaborative muscles. If we're more in relationship with one another and we're vulnerable with one another and we've got more trust, now we're willing to collaborate, to work together. To do the work of the kingdom. And that's what they did in the early church. My gosh. Well, they, they thought Jesus was returning <laughs> tomorrow. And so they weren't afraid. They would sell things, sell their homes, give it to the church so that everybody had it in need. It's incredible, right? Now, the thing about that is it's never forced. It's always voluntary. It's always voluntary. And so we then begin to collaborate because Marty and I working together can accomplish a whole lot more than me trying to do it myself. We just did the, the Angels, Demons, and Spiritual Realm conference. Marty and Elizabeth and Trista, I'm telling you, without, especially if there were others, but those three, it would have never happened because they can do things I can't do and couldn't do, right? Now, here's my question. What happens when we are not 
relational, vulnerable, and collaborative. What happened? Isolation. Absolutely. That's why I put disconnected. Right? I don't know if it's still a word, but you've been dissed. <laughs> Disrespected. Still a word? Yeah. So you've been dissed, and that's what happens. We diss one another, and then we're no longer connected. You know, when you, when you come to church on Sundays, my job is not to make you feel good. Do you realize that? Now, it is in the sense of we're all in Christ. But it's also the sense that as, as we, we all have blind spots, and we need God to speak to our hearts about issues that may cause us to feel really uncomfortable. Maybe even offended. And that's where you've got to step back and go, okay, was he way off base? Or is God speaking to me? You follow me? So here's our question to, to finish up, and this is where I got Josh with the microphone. How can we at faith strengthen these muscles? What are ways that could happen? Now's the hard part because people have to be vulnerable. Paul's got a hand up. Go ahead. Okay, so take every opportunity to gather together and learn the word, okay? Somebody else got one? Over here, Mike's got one. Okay, we can share the gospel. We're talking individually to share the gospel with anyone. Yeah. So, and, and that may mean to learn how to share the gospel. Because that's a vulnerable thing, isn't it? Especially in a, a, almost an anti-Christian culture. Yes. Faith behind here. Okay, so, so there's one where it's at home, you alone with God and being really vulnerable and pouring out your heart. And how, how many of us take time, make time to just be quiet with God? Absolutely. Nora, Nora, you got something. Yes, I saw a relation to myself. I was thinking like, um, listen and ask questions when you are talking to people. Just listen to them and ask them questions. Yes, listening. That's grandma's old advice, right? You've got two ears and one mouth to listen twice as much as you speak. That's right. Absolutely. That's great. Oh, we got John over here. And then we're going to move to the next question. You said isolation, that word kind of stuck to me. I mean, we can experience isolation when, even when we're with someone, or surrounded by people. So we should recognize that and avoid isolation at all costs. Okay. And, and you, uh, that's really important. Recognize the people around you who maybe are in the group, but there's no communication coming from them. <clears throat> they can be, you can be isolated while you're in a group. All right, here's the second thing. What sacrifices are necessary to strengthen these muscles? <clears throat> Got one over here.
Okay. So Sasha says, prioritizing my time, right, that my most important priority is to grow into the likeness of Jesus. Well, what, ki- what kinds of things <laughs> do that, right? Kyle's over here. microphone uh, show up for stuff we got oh, a men's show up breakfast. for stuff we got a men's breakfast coming up next Saturday at 8 30 um, would love to see all the men here at that yeah that's great like the men's breakfast so that that becomes we've got some small groups that are starting we've got the men's breakfast that's going once a month we we have a women's group on Wednesdays in the at 10 o'clock 10 o'clock, and men at 1 o'clock on Mondays, right? And we want some other small groups to get started for evenings. We have the young adults on Thursday nights uh, from 6.30 to 8.30. And so it's about, again, prioritizing our time. And it is sacrifice because I don't know anybody anymore who's not got full calendars. Amen? And so it's just a question of, is my priority to grow into the likeness of Jesus? And that doesn't happen unless it's intentional. And that means I have to sacrifice something else because I don't have any more room. And, and, and that's what it takes, right? Because the goal here is not to become a great big church. That's not the goal. The goal is to make disciples of Jesus Christ, who then make disciples. And we become more of a river than a huge lake. Does that make sense? Right? That's, that's, we're just trying to do what Jesus wants us to do and be. And we've already got the guarantee of eternal life. So we go on that journey together just to become more like him. And what an exciting journey it is. I'm, I can tell you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close with this. One of the great things for me, personally, is to see my own personal growth in overcoming what I know have been obstacles that nobody else knew. Right? Because I can see God changing me on the inside. I haven't arrived. It won't until I get to heaven. But it's a fabulous journey. And it's what he calls us to be and to do. Amen? All right. So, we're not supposed to have a conclusion where this is the answer. It's simply, God, what are you speaking to my heart? And maybe you do that as you come up for communion today. What are you speaking to my heart? What do I need to change in my priorities? Am I willing to commit to growing into the likeness of Jesus as my top priority? Ooh. Be careful if you say yes. Because the Holy Spirit will take you up on it. Amen? Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you this morning for your word, for your challenge. To grow into the likeness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, what an amazing journey that is. And I, I just pray that every person who's heard this, whether online or in the house, Lord, that we accept the invitation and begin to see you do more transformation than we've ever seen in our life. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, amen. amen. All right. Fantastic. So the next thing we're going to do is communion. And so I...